Hi everyone. So today we're going to talk about using affirmational decks in our spiritual practice. Oh, quite some time ago, one of you had asked me to make a video on this. It's been so long, but here we are, we're finally doing it. I think it's a great question. It can be tricky to, when you sit with the idea of an affirmational deck, like when you're going to purchase one, you know, you can feel like, all right, I totally like, I need this in my life. This is going to bring good energy in. It's going to like help me to, you know, get clear, that kind of thing. And then you get the deck, you end up working with it or trying to work with it. And it just ends up sitting on your shelf and you don't really know how to use it because it's not the same as tarot or a traditional Oracle deck. Uh, it's got a different energy. It's got a different feel to it. And you know, the affirmation doesn't always make sense if you're trying to do a spread about something. So, <clears throat> Uh, what I want us to talk about are ways in which we can use those decks so that if you have one that you're not using right now, you don't feel like you've wasted a purchase and you can also get a chance to really get to know your deck and then decide if you want to keep that deck or, you know, move it along the line to someone else who might be able to use it. So there's a few different ideas of an affirmational deck in my mind, as I was thinking about this, like what would I consider an affirmational deck? And I started to go like, well, really, almost every Oracle deck in some way could be an affirmational deck, right? So that can be a large scope that we're looking at. But I narrowed it down to a few decks, and I'm actually going to pull the White Light Oracle, too, because I think you could technically, you might be able to say that that's kind of an affirmational deck, too. Even though it's not fully, you could still pull it that way if you wanted to. So we're going to use, like, one of the most, like, straight-up affirmational decks ever. The universe has your back. I still don't know why I've ever purchased this deck, but I did. Um, and also postcards from spirit because that's straight up affirmational. And then the she who deck. Uh, this is not technically affirmational, but I can see where you might get stuck in like, how do I use this in a reading? And so that deck we will also be pulling from and depending on time, etc., I might use the white light Oracle as well. So first of all, there's the straight up general way you can use this deck, which is recommended, or this type of deck, which is recommended in every guidebook, including whatever came with the actual deck itself. So this isn't me saying anything that you don't already know. It's just offering an obvious piece of the puzzle here in case you really have a block around this. You can use the affirmational deck as an affirmation for your day or a phrase or mantra to meditate with. So for instance, if I'm going to sit down and draw my card for the morning and I need to know what affirmation my guides want me to have, instead of praying for an outcome, I pray for the highest good of all. Let's say that's my affirmational card. Okay. Now I have an option about what I could do with this. Just if I'm just using it as a daily draw, if I'm just using this as a daily draw, then I can see from this card, that instead of putting my own needs first, I can ask for the highest good of all to come in each and every situation or thing that I deal with in the day. And I can keep this card maybe in my journal with me as I go throughout my day to remind me of this message. That's a great way to use an affirmational deck. I can also sit with this image and meditate with the card itself if I feel so inclined. So. Um, this isn't a deck I, I really choose to meditate with, but if I wanted to journey with this card, then I could step into this image. I could use this phrase as a mantra in a meditation and then see what ended up happening for me as far as a journey goes. Okay, so this is an option that you can use the deck for. You may find that you only want to use an affirmational deck for that. You know, like hats off to you, babe. Like perfectly, totally fine. Uh, affirmational decks have that purpose, right? Like that's a great thing and we can enjoy that and that can have its space if that really feels appropriate for you. But let's say you find that you just don't use it and you want to use it in a tarot reading. How can you use an affirmational deck to give you information in a tarot reading, whether it's for yourself or for a client? So now we're going to talk about that piece. I'm going to use the Tarot de la Night de la Nuit of the night. I'm just gonna, yeah, this guy, guys, the low Scarabio deck uh, with horrendous card stock, but I like this tarot deck. <clears throat> so let's say 
that we are going, so let's, let's flesh it out a little bit for you first. So instead of just jumping right into a tarot reading, let's say I want to draw an affirmational tarot card for the day, which is the hermit. Uh, so I just said affirmational tarot card, but let's say I want to do a tarot card of the day and I got the hermit, okay? And then I want to clarify the hermit for me. So what aspect of the hermit can I explore today? Or in what way should I be exploring the hermit today, guys? And then I'm going to draw a card from the universe has your back. As you can see, not a well-used deck. Okay, when I'm connected to my joyful presence, I attract support from the universe. Okay, so how can I apply this to the hermit? So what I would say to you if I was sitting with this would be in my solitude today, in my moments of solitude, which Lord knows we're all getting a lot of that right now. When I bring joyful presence to that solitude, that's when I can experience the psychopomp aspect of the hermit and, ask, and access wisdom that I need at this time for myself, from my higher self. So this is a way that you can use this in addition to a daily draw to help like flesh out how the hermit can be applied to your life or how whatever your daily tarot draw is can be applied to your life in that exact day for you. Okay, so that can be very helpful. Um, and I do that myself as well, not with this deck, but uh, I like if I use the Wooden Oracle. So the Wooden Oracle is an example of a deck that, while not affirmational, just has one phrase and no guidebook. So release, right? So let's use this really quickly for you as well. Let's do the same thing. Let's say, what do I need to know today, guys? What do I need to know today? Draw my card. Oh, I've got the Two of Wands. Right? Love that image. Okay. Then I want to clarify, how can I apply the energy of the Two of Wands in my day today? And then I draw from the Wooden Oracle and I get Illuminate. So it's bringing an expansiveness, a trust, an intention to any, let's say I would, let's say I could apply this today to any type of spiritual research or work that I'm doing to deepen my knowledge and my practice. I can use this illumination aspect to flesh out the energy of the two of wands in which I'm feeling inspired by the research I'm doing, encouraged on my path, and excited to see where it's going to take me. And the illumination piece lets me know that I can experience that to a really beautiful depth today by allowing myself the time and space to research whatever it is I feel called to research on my spiritual path. So that's a way you can use those one word uh, decks for further clarification of a daily draw. Now, let's say we're doing a tarot reading. I'm just going to do a three-card spread, guys, because I don't want to get too off the cuff here. We're already at eight minutes into this video. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to do this with Postcards from Spirit and with the Elki Oracle, the she -Hu. So let's say I'm doing a spread and I want to know about what's going on in my mind right now in regards to, let's use, let's say career, since a lot of us are thinking about that. Mind, body, spirit in regards to career, right? Basic three card spread. So for mind, I have the ace of wands. For body, I have the two of pentacles. And for spirit, I have the knight of wands. So already I can see that I get a lot of fire energy going on here. And just looking at the tarot cards, I can see that it's a really a great time for me to explore thoughts on what, what new offerings I might want to make in regards to, let's just say, if we're applying this to me, like my online offerings, right? Okay. So that's really exciting. I can see that in the mind that there's like new thoughts, new ideas about what to offer. It's kind of exciting. My body in regards to the career, though, is in a need for balance with the Two of Pentacles. So while my mind's raring to go, I also have to balance the needs of the body here and realize that I have to take care of myself and maybe move a little more slowly in the physical or energetic aspect of my work than I would typically like to. And then if I look at my spirit, I see the Knight of Wands. I mean, it's pretty sexy energy for spirit. And 
we can see that there may be a new chapter I'm getting ready to explore in regards to my career as far as my spirit goes, as far as what I want to offer here, okay? So that's the mind, body, spirit, basic three-card spread. You can, you can use that for any aspect of your life. Now, I ask for clarification from the She Who deck, and I get She Who Surprises, Brees. Surprise, discovery, and revelation. So how does Brees, or Bryce, I'm not sure what, how we would pronounce that correctly, uh, how is she, if I'm looking at this as an affirmational card, right, like how can I use this as clarification? Well, the first thing that I would say to you is to use the key words at the bottom of the deck in this type of situation as uh, kind of like your entry point. So the feel of the picture, which is like she's discovering, she's exploring, it's a new adventure. And then my key words are surprise. So the clarification being offered here as a whole in the mind, body, spirit energy is to allow something fresh and new to inspire me. So working with this as clarification, it's about bringing a sense of surprise and adventure, fresh discovery into my experience in regards to career. So that's how you can use <coughs> excuse me, an affirmational deck that has key phrases, key words like this. It's not straight up an affirmational deck, but there are plenty of affirmational decks out there like this that you can, you can use it for clarification in a tarot reading. I don't want you to feel like you can only use it for an affirmational draw in the morning. Okay, so now I'm going to show you, let's see. I want to like reiterate that. So there's two, here's three. Okay, so let's use... Let's use the, the Gabrielle Bernstein deck because it's really one of those great examples of like a tricky affirmational deck for clarification in a reading. All right, so I'm going to do past, present, future in regards to relationship. Let's do it. We'll, we'll do like the big career relationship. So past, present, future in regards to relationship. Four of Swords, Two of Wands, Six of Swords. Let's say this is of an existing relationship. And uh, we can see in the past that there's been perhaps a sense of, uh, or a lack of attention, lack of connection that's adversely affected the relationship. But Two of Wands is letting us know that the couple is trying to work on the energy together. Uh, they're trying to choose to look at things positively and to keep the faith as it were. And then in the future, we see the Six of Swords energy, which lets us know that there's a, a movement and energy travel away. And so we can see from that, I mean, I would offer if I was just doing a reading on this, and I know sometimes you guys feel like it's a reading for you when I do stuff like this. So if, if, you're, if this is resonating for you for where you are, I would offer that Six of Swords means, means that there's some type of moving away in the couple's experience. So it may be that... Uh, one of the individuals is moving closer to the other or that there's a deeper connection. Now, let's say I a deepening of the connection that involves in some way physical distance. Now, let's say I want to clarify that. So let's say I'm reading and I'm like, I feel the Six of Swords energy. I need clarification. Now, typically, right, like we might pull from um, Alice in Wonderland or pull from our tarot deck for clarification. But we're going to use the affirmational deck now because I'm going to show you that you can connect in this way. It's not the most organic process, but you can do it. So let's ask the universe has your back to give us some clarification on the Six of Swords energy for the couple. When I think I've surrendered, I surrender more. So, yeah, it's a little frustrating. But, like, when you first look at that, you're like, okay, so more surrender for the relationship. So this is where, like, you got to hit your first point of disbelief, which is like, yeah, so surrender. So what's that? Okay. So then we have to like kind of feel into it a little bit more. When I think I surrender, I surrender more. Someone in the relationship has to step into a space of trust and choose to trust in order for this space and distance to be um, brought instead of farther apart, closer together. All right. And where we see that in the future, we can see that someone is making a choice either to trust or not to trust. But because this is about surrendering more, 
I would offer for my client, or if I was reading for myself, information for myself, that that individual needs to choose trust now and moving into the future if they want the relationship to be able to continue to, to grow, to be explored fully and not to reach an abrupt ending. So from that, you can then ask for more clarity from the tarot deck. So just because if, if you are considering this a reading for yourself, I, I want to finish it for you. So we have this inside of someone needs to trust more. It's probably the person who's come for the reading or you yourself, if you are, if you're drawing for yourself, like, let's be honest. And so final outcome clarification from the tarot deck is eight of wands action. <sighs> I would offer in this type of reading that someone is going to choose trust and take action to close the distance between the two individuals and to allow for a deepening, a deepened sense of connection that may even involve lessening physical distance between the couple. So you can see how you can work with the affirmational deck to offer clarification. Now, another thing that you can do is to work with an affirmational deck as kind of like the icing on the cake of your reading, okay? So, and we're gonna actually pull from postcards from Spirit for this. Um, I know from that last, one of the last videos I did, some of you actually purchased that postcards from Spirit deck and it's really great for those times like this of great distress and fear because you don't have to think too much. It's just a message from your guides, straight up. It's not really made to be used in a spread, but I'm going to show you that you can use it in a spread if you want to. So we'll do another three card spread here and we're going to use postcards from spirit as an affirmational, uh, no, I'm sorry, as the icing on the cake of the reading. So, um, let's see, what do we want to ask for this? Hmm. How can I connect more deeply with my spiritual path during this time? That will be the question. So we have the Emperor, the Four of Wands, and then we have the Magician here as well. All right, so two major Arcana cards in regards to the spiritual path and a three-card spread automatically lets us know that right now the spiritual path is key. It's, 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 uh, it's paramount in this individual's life. Connecting with their spiritual path, deepening their spiritual practice is going to bring them a lot of fulfillment and also give them an understanding of why they're going through this present experience. So the spiritual path is very important and we know that because we've got two majors here right now. Now those majors happen to be the emperor and the magician, which means and um, the four of wands, which is also about communion, connection, union. So this is about deepening a spiritual experience, probably specifically with one guide or with higher self if you don't work with guides, and letting that be a self-led path. I say that because the magician and the emperor, this is that energy of leadership, empowerment, and you taking the reins. You already have all the tools at your disposal. So it's not necessarily about interesting, different than earlier. It's not necessarily about doing more research, chop wood, carry water in that extent. It's more about going within, finding the answer within, connecting with guides and accessing the wisdom within the self. And the Four of Wands lets us know why I move in the guide direction with this is because Four of Wands typically for me is that type of marriage celebration, union coming together type of thing. Uh, and so with this union with the divine, we may be connecting with a specific guide or deity to assist us in that process. And this is a self-led experience, not um, one where we read a book to figure out how to do it. Now, how can we use postcards from Spirit to offer us some wisdom in this reading? So... What we can ask is, please give me insight into how I can connect with this specific guide. Okay, that's going to be our question. You can hear Vincent in the background, guys, sorry. Um, dear you, so now I'm going to read you the affirmation. Remember, we're asking, how can I connect more with this guide that we've referenced with Four of Wands? Check in occasionally with yourself about your motives behind actions you plan on taking, especially when you have an end game in mind. Is the source of your motivation desire or entitlement? Maybe you're drawn to a certain path because you think it will bring you a feeling related to the outcome you seek, like safety or wholeness. Know that you will see a reflection in the outer world of the motive that drives you forward. Do you need a motive? Can you simply be pulled in the direction your soul calls you toward? 
joy, discovery, growth, or adventure, participating in something compelling and meaningful without trying to define it. If you can step forward, surrender to whatever spirit has in store for you, you will be amazed at how things turn out. Check your motives, then hand them over to spirit. Everybody here wants the best for you. Life loves you more than you know. So how we can use this as the icing on the cake to this reading is that we can see that we have to surrender a plan or a structure or whatever it is we want to experience with this guide as a part of deepening our spiritual path at this time. It cannot be something that we're trying to control or that like, I want to feel safer. So I need to connect with you in order to feel safer. It may be that our guides are wanting us to connect more to a sense of joy or adventure or breathing into the lack of safety that we may be experiencing currently or the feeling of a lack of safety that we may be experiencing currently. So it's about, as the icing on the cake of this reading, it's about surrendering what we think we need from our relationship with our guide and allowing it to be whatever it is meant to be. So hopefully this helps you to see a few different ways that you can work with oracle decks. Um, not oracle decks, I'm sorry. Man, uh, not manifestation decks, affirmation decks in your personal um, practice or if you're reading for others. Um, really quickly, I am going to show you that it is possible to do a spread with an affirmational deck. Uh, you're not going to get the same experience that you would get if you were using tarot, and I certainly don't encourage this, but let's say you're in a pinch. Let's say like you're at your friend's house, you're all having a great, grand old time, and all you have is an affirmational deck in your purse, and all of a sudden we want to do readings together, right? Like that happens sometimes. And those are always fun experiences together. So let's say this is the case. And let's say somebody wants to ask about, uh, uh, do, you know, do, does this person like me or is this person interested in me, right? Okay, so we're going to do two cards on this from the affirmational deck. I'm going to show you that you can do this. <laughs> like, do we have to keep getting this card? All right, guys, so we need to connect to joy, right? Because, like, we keep getting this card. When I'm connected to my joyful presence, I attract support from the universe. My happiness is a direct reflection of my level of faith in the universe. All right, so this is what we've drawn for this reading of does this individual like me, right? Which, like, again, guys, you all know I don't encourage that type of reading, but if we're talking about this type of scenario, let's all admit that it does happen from time to time, right? So if the question is, does this individual like me, I think both of these cards with the words joyful presence and happiness and faith showing up, let us know that there probably is a sense or a spark, a sense of attraction or a spark between the two people. Um, now let's say our friend is like, well, do I reach out and connect with that person then? Do I make the first move? Okay, so let's say that's the next question. All right, we're going to draw one card for that. Oneness is my true nature. Okay, so that's our answer from this deck. Like, you can see how freaking frustrating it would be to actually read with an affirmational deck. But I'm going to show you that you can do it. Oneness is my true nature. I would say, yes, that individual can feel encouraged to respectfully maybe message or attempt to have a conversation with the individual that they feel attracted to. Uh, doesn't mean they need to go off the deep end or go on the crazy train, but reaching out and establishing um, a connection of a few words is definitely something that they could explore. So now let's get, be real that an affirmational deck is generally going to be all positive, right? So we want to be clear that like this isn't something I would do daily. And if someone was coming to me for a reading, this would not be a deck I would use to give it a reading because it's not going to give you the whole picture. But it is going to give you some positive information and it's also going to affirm for you thought processes that might help you on your current path at this time. So you can see that you are able to use the affirmational decks. It's just, um, it's, it's about you, you have to trust your intuition. And also, um, you kind of have to get over that uh, feeling of stickiness because it's very ambiguous. Affirmational decks are not going to really work for divination. Like you just saw, we can make it work in a pinch. But they're not going to give you the same level of clarity and uh, I'll use the word comfort that tarot and oracle decks are going to offer you when it comes to divination. So hopefully this has helped and has answered the question um, that one of you posed for me. If you need me to clarify anything or suss anything out, out for you as far as using affirmational decks, uh, post comments in the 
um, you know, down below. And I will do my best to, at the very least, give everything a read and write down notes for requests for next and upcoming videos. Um, as always, I'm sending you all much love, many blessings. See you in the next video.